Hi, my name is Magna Nuda. I'm a captain and instructor on ATAR aircraft. This video is about the instrument panels in ATAR aircraft with AFIS cockpit and provides a general description. For more details, please refer to the flight crew operating manual, the FCOM. This video is made in two parts. Part 1 was about the flight instruments. This is part 2 and covers the rest of the instrument panels. Below the standby instruments is the crew alert panel, CAP. It is part of the centralized crew alert system, CCAS. When a system failure occurs, bells and whistles will sound and a caption on the crew alert panel will illuminate. It helps the pilot to identify the failed system. The layout of the panel depends on the ATR variant. This is the panel for an ATR-42-300 and this is the panel for an ATR-72-500. There are three levels of alerts. Level 3 are red warnings, such as fire and smoke. Level 2 are amber cautions, such as failures to hydraulic or electrical systems. Level 1 are amber advisories, for example to inform you that the parking brake is on. The clear push button is used to remove all level 2 captions. The recall push button is used to reactivate all active cautions that were removed with the clear push button. The takeoff inhibit push button is pressed before takeoff and inhibits several alerts that might distract the pilots during takeoff. A blue takeoff inhibit light is then illuminated. The takeoff inhibit is disengaged when the landing gear is selected up or when you press the recall push button. Engine indications and some other controls are located on the center panel. The power management selector is used to select power setting for each phase of flight, takeoff, climb, and cruise. The MCT position gives maximum continuous power. An automatic bug on the torque indicator shows the maximum allowable torque in relation to the position of the power management selector and atmospheric conditions. ATR variants with automatic propeller speed have propeller electronic control, PEC. The PEC has two channels. An amber single channel caption illuminates if one of the channels in the PEC is inoperative. ATR variants without PEC has a push button for a synchrophaser. Above the engine instruments, we have the engine control panel. ATR 42300 and 320 have ECU, engine control unit. All of the variants have EEC, Engine Electronic Control. In the middle is the push button for ATPCS, the Automatic Takeoff Power Control System. It is fully described in this video. Outside the push buttons are captions for propeller low pitch, which enables reverse on the ground, and up trim, which is part of the ATPCS. The torque indicator shows engine torque in percent of maximum rated torque. And this is the automatic bug I mentioned when I talk about the power management selector. In addition, there is a manually adjustable bug that is used to indicate the desired torque you will use for takeoff and other phases of flight. The NP indicator shows propeller RPM in percent. At 100%, it's 1200 RPM. The ITT indicator shows the interturbine temperature, which is the temperature between the high pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine. An amber light illuminates when the temperature exceeds 800 degrees Celsius or 715 degrees Celsius in hotel mode. The NH and L indicator shows the RPM in the high pressure and low pressure turbine shafts in percent. The fuel flow indicator shows the current fuel flow. Fuel used indicator shows accumulated fuel consumption. It is reset by pulling this knob. The unit is either kilograms or pounds, depending on aircraft modification. The oil pressure indicator has a red light that illuminates when the oil pressure is below 40 psi, except for during engine start and when the engine is shut down. And this is the oil temperature indicator. The fuel temperature indicator has a green sector between 0 and 50 degrees Celsius. The sensor is located downstream of the fuel heater. The fuel clog light illuminates when the fuel filter begins to clog. 
ATO variance without PEC have a temperature indicator for the left-hand fuel feeder tank. Later on, this indicator was moved to the overhead panel. The fuel quantity indicators show the weight of the fuel in each tank. There is a test push button and low level warning lights for each tank, indicating that the fuel quantity in the associated feeder tank is less than 160 kilos. The ice detection system has an ice detection light, a test push button and a green icing AOA light that illuminates when the anti-icing systems have been selected on. The icing AOA light indicates that the stall warning system will be triggered at less angle of attack than normal. This compensates for any adverse aerodynamic effects ice can have on the wings. The icing AOA light is extinguished by pressing the push button, but only when the anti-icing systems have been selected off. To the right of the first officer's flight instruments, there is a panel for the APM, the Aircraft Performance Monitoring System. It is part of the ice protection system. However, some older ATRs may not have the APM. The rotating knob is used to set the weight of the aircraft before takeoff. The APM will then calculate what rate of climb and cruise speed you should have when the wings are clean of ice. If ice accumulation results in reduced performance, the pilots are given alerts in the form of three captions on the glare ship. The first level is cruise speed low. Then follows degraded performance and finally increased speed. The combined temperature and true airspeed indicator is, depending on ATR variant, located below the captain's VSI or below the cap. It shows total air temperature, TAT, and true airspeed, TIS. When you press the SIT push button, the temperature indicator shows the static air temperature. The air data computer switch allows the selected air data computer to supply the temperature and true airspeed indicator, both engine electronic controls and the GPS. And note, the air data source for the flight instruments cannot be switched. Therefore, if an air data computer fails, the affected flight instruments are lost and cannot be recovered. Here is a placard showing some important speed limitations. VMO is maximum indicated airspeed. That is the barber pole on the airspeed indicator. MMO is the maximum Mach number. VA is maximum maneuvering speed, which is maximum speed where you can apply maximum deflection of the flight controls. VLE is maximum speed with the landing gear extended. VLO is maximum speed when the landing gear is operating which means lowering or retracting. VFE is maximum speed with flaps extended. To the right side of the center panel, we have the memory panel, or memo panel for short. It shows blue captions when the following systems are activated. No smoking signs and seatbelt signs in the cabin, continuous ignition, air from the icing, propeller brake, and fuel crossfit. Here are the indicators for aileron trim, rudder trim, and nose trim. The nose trim, or pitch trim, must be inside the green arc at takeoff. The pitch trim asymmetric light illuminates when both pitch trim tabs are not synchronized. On ATR 42300 and 320, the flaps indicator shows the position of the interconnection torque shaft between the left hand and the right hand flaps. On all of the ATR variants, the indicator shows the position of the left inboard flaps. The flaps asymmetric light illuminates when the difference between left hand and right hand flaps is 6.7 degrees or more. ATR 42300 and 320 do not have this alert. This is the on-off push button for the stick pusher and shaker. Activation of the stick pusher triggers a caption near the airspeed indicator. The rudder TLU indicator shows a green low speed, or OK light, when full rudder deflection is available. The rudder travel limit unit reduces maximum rudder deflection at high speed, hence protecting against overload of the stabilizer.
The empty skid panel has an on off push button, a test push button, and fault indicators. The fault indicators illuminate during system test. This triple indicator shows the hydraulic pressure in the parking brake accumulator, the blue hydraulic system, and the green hydraulic system. The landing gear lever is shaped like a wheel and must be pulled out before it can be moved up or down. The lever cannot be moved when the aircraft is on the ground. This is the primary landing gear indicator. When the panel is dark, the landing gear is up and locked. Red unlock lights indicate that it's in transit. And green triangles indicate that the landing gear is on and locked. There is a second indicator on the overhead panel. It is totally independent of the primary indicator. Next, we have a panel for the automatic cabin pressurization system. It is easy to use. Before takeoff, you set the elevation at the destination airport rounded to the nearest hundreds of feet. The system does the rest. The dump push button is guarded and will open the outflow valves fully. It must only be used when called for by a checklist. The descent rate push button, when pushed in, increases the descent rate of the cabin pressure from 400 feet per minute to 500 feet per minute. We use it when we are descending with more than 2,000 feet per minute for a prolonged time. The ditch push button closes the outflow valves and is used when we are about to land on water. The other controls are for manual operation of the system. Finally, we have the AFCS, the Automatic Flight Control System. It has a control panel and an ADU, Advisory Display Unit, and four control knobs. The AFCS control panel allows the pilots to control the flight director, which provides steering commands for the pilots and the autopilot. Those four push buttons are for lateral or horizontal modes. When active, they display a vertical magenta bar on the ADI and the active mode is shown in green on the ADU and the ADI. R nodes are shown in white. Pressing the heading push button activates the heading mode. The aircraft will then follow the heading bug on the EHSI, which is set with this rotating knob. When in heading mode, the pilots can select high or low bank modes. In high bank, the aircraft will turn with 27 degrees bank. In low bank, the aircraft will turn in 15 degrees bank. Low bank is used for takeoff and go around. Pressing the now push button arms of activates navigation modes. This can be seen as from ADVR, localizer, or R now, which is the GPS. The letter is displayed as L now. The coupling push button decides which side the flight director shall be coupled to. When the flight director is coupled to the captain's side, the flight director will follow signals for now on and air data computer number one and vice versa. The coupling must always be on the side of the pilot flying, otherwise you get very confused. Pressing the approach mode arms both the localizer and the glide slope. Pressing the BC push button arms the localizer back course mode. A back course approach is a procedure where the localizer is used for an approach to the opposite runway. Very few airports have back course procedures, if they still exist. I have flown back course approaches, but that was 20 years ago. Those three push buttons are for vertical modes. When active, they display a horizontal magenta bar on the EADI. Pressing the IS push button activates the indicated airspeed mode. The speed is indicated on the ADU and is adjusted with this pitch wheel. Pressing the VS activates the vertical speed mode. The vertical rate is indicated on the ADU and set with the pitch wheel. Before you start to climb or descend, you may set the target altitude with this knob. When the aircraft starts to climb or descend, altitude capture mode is automatically armed. The aircraft will then level off automatically when reaching the selected altitude. Pressing the ALT push button activates altitude hold mode. If the aircraft was climbing or descending when the push button was pressed, the aircraft will return to that altitude. Each pilot can switch off the flight director bars, but the flight director mouse will still be active, as shown on the ADU and the EADI.
The standby push button will cancel all flight director modes and engage basic modes, which are basically maintain heading and pitch. You can then adjust the pitch with the pitch wheel. The yaw damper is activated after the landing gear is selected up and disengaged shortly before landing. It provides a comfortable ride for the passengers. And note to glass cockpit pilots, there is no auto trim here. The autopilot can be activated at takeoff as low as 100 feet. It must be disengaged at not lower than 160 feet for approach or 80 feet for eyeless K2 approach. A red AP off light on the glare shield illuminates when the autopilot is disengaged. And this concludes the second part of the video about the instrument panels. If you want to learn more about the systems on the ATR, you can watch the following videos. And that's all for this time. I hope you liked it. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and by clicking like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. You can also follow me on Facebook and give a donation with PayPal. See links below. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.